and hello and welcome to the 10 o'clock news. There have been a lot of issues in today's news. Let's go straight down to the bare bone of it. First of all, the headlines. Dang. Argentina beat Brazil 99-0. England lose to Poland 7-0. Jamaica beat Belgium 100-0. And finally, there is nothing else. But anyway, let's go straight to our sports correspondent who has a very strange issue on his hand where there seems to be a hooligan on the football field. Let's go straight to Kirk in the studio. Down, down, down. <coughs> okay, Kirk, and what seems to be the problem over there? <laughs> Have the police done anything? No, we just don't care. Yes. Yeah, we don't care. Yeah, I'm staying. <laughs> you got yeah. you know, go, 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 well, that's the end of Telecop News, you know. Tune into the 11 o'clock news, you'll be a second longer. Thank you and goodbye. Now, turn the TV off and pop things to do. Like smoking. It's my birthday, no? I oh, know, happy birthday. You come in, you told me, so I'm gonna have a drink. Do you think, bro? Cause... Like, the way you've been moving, that's gonna spray everywhere, you know? Do you know what? I hope not. But if it does, <laughs> I'm gonna spray it over there, cause there's no rules. Or maybe outside. Do you reckon it'll spray everywhere? Nah, it should be alright. Come on. You don't know! Happy birthday, Paul! Now we kick off the ting. It's funny, because it's funny you even say that, cause I saw Leicester had a lockdown. And... It's a new one, isn't it? A they've got a new, a second, second wave over yeah. there, I rate that. Wave after wave, and then I thought to myself, Trey Dean's definitely not from London, he needs to come down to London. I wonder what it's like as a comparison. Then I thought, wait a minute, I saw Trey Dean's interview talking about the whole COVID thing. So, how has this whole situation been with you? Because you actually voiced your opinion on it as a footballer, and it was kind of. No, as nice. a person, they took it as a footballer. Ah, good point, go on. Talk to me about that. So, because I've got. My son's got breathing problems, hasn't it? He, okay. He was born early, so he's. Not everything's developed and all that, so he's, he struggles, even if the wind blows, like he. Like, a, you know, like catch, catch him out of breath and stuff. So any like colds and flus and that they've said for the first year is going to be very like, you know, got to keep an eye on him kind of thing. So when we when we spoke about going back initially, for me, like, I understand there's a risk with everything in it. Like drive your car, there's a risk. Of course. You crash it or what, you know what I'm saying, with anything. But if you want me to go back to work, you've got to be able to explain to me what we're doing how we're doing it, mm -hmm. what happens if Leicester, for example, happens, does season scrap, does it, all, all of these just simple questions. Isn't it? 100. And first couple of times, they couldn't really answer me, so I was like, all right, I ain't going back. Until you come with the answers, I ain't going back. That's not me saying, I don't want to go to work, I don't want to do any of this, does that, it's just like, you man, that's you want to take your risk, that's you, you want to take my money, cool, I've had no money before. Like, people got that confused, like I'm, Sitting there going, yeah, I want to be broke. No one wants to be broke. Yeah, you know? he. I survived without money before. Fortunate that I can survive. If it was to stop earning today, I could still survive because I've got a few things put away. 100%. But, do you know what I mean? Like, for my family and my kids, football was not worth that. So you're talking about the principles now, and you're just basically saying, as a principal, I am here to protect my family. If I'm potentially going to put my family at risk. Because mm -hmm. remember, the first conversations were. Mm -hmm. The one even going to have the Premier League back okay. at that point. So people, what frustrates me is people read the media, innit? So you'll see the paper and it's like, oh, it's this, that and the other. But the next day, it's, he said it's fine, so everyone go back to work. But no one's going, wait there, logically, how does it work out that we can be three weeks ago, this is talking earlier on in COVID, three weeks ago, the whole country might have to lock down and we've got the highest death rates in Europe. But now you say go back to work and everything's cool. 
So then take <laughs> this was because this is that's crazy because I think if you're if you're right, it's not about being a professional footballer. To say as a man now, mm-hmm. as a man going to work, there are some people going to work that not disrespect to them just because at time in life you're not men, you, mm-hmm. you're kids to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. So your responsibility is basically going to be whatever an older person tells you to do. Yeah, yeah. This is what's going to happen now. As a senior figure in the changing room, mm-hmm. if you make that decision and it tree cools down, and now everyone's realizing, wait a minute, maybe we should be a little bit a little mm-hmm. bit more aware. Ain't that good for football? Ain't that good for people to start making decisions for themselves, you feel? Because I think one thing me and Tigo was discussing is Troy Deeney is almost like a rare commodity, but is he? Is he a rare commodity? I don't think I'm rare. I think it's just I speak, which is rare. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't got... I'm not worried about consequences of me talking. Mm -hmm. So, and I never speak on anything uninformed. So, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't speak on anything on your side and, and not know what I'm talking about. 100%. 100%. Me and you've never had a conversation and you've gone, right, oh, choice for the shit, you know? Never. Because I won't speak on something I don't know, but I just, I don't, I don't know it. Educate me. Or if I don't know it, right, I'm getting a car, I'm going to put an audio book on, I'm going to figure it out. That's the kind of person that I am. So I see, I see a lot of things, like people act like I was the only person that never went back to work. Did you not notice that? Yeah, 100%. Because Daniel Rose... Players in my team, players in other teams, they didn't go back to work straight away. Did they speak up though? No, nah, but what I'm saying is Troy spoke, so it's... Troy's right. the guy, oh, let's okay. Let's attack that, but I'm, that's why these shoulders are so big, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what are you gonna say? You're not gonna impact me as a man by trying to force me to go back to work. So then when did yeah. Troy Deeney become this Troy Deeney or has Troy Deeney entered yeah. football with these principles? Or is it something you've had to learn uh, in being a man whilst playing nah, football? Like I've, made, I've made so many mistakes because I'm hard-headed. So I'll always think I'm right. I always, even when, until I've proved absolutely wrong, yeah. I'll always think I'm right. Because I was there, you know, just <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I'm always like that, to be fair. But you, I think when you get older, like I, was, I was 32 the other day on Monday, so you, you get to that point now when you're just like, oh, I don't know everything. And that's what scares people, because I'm honest enough to go, I don't, I don't know everything. Cool. So I'm either going to not talk about it, I'm going to read up on it and I'm going to learn. That's it. But I do, I do things simple. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't turn around and say to me, I don't know, when I'm having conversations with like political people, for example, and you had the Matt Hancock situation you know, okay. with the NHS. Okay. When he called footballers out, said Premier League footballers need <laughs> to be doing more. Remember yeah. that? Yes, I do. So I said, cool, what are you doing? We'll do, we'll do our bit. But what you do? And the only person that called him out was Piers Morgan. And me and Piers are not friends, we're not, I don't really agree with everything he says, but he called him out. There's a lot of truth there. in what you're saying. All the, all the Premier League players put a certain amount of money together, we raised a huge amount of money, and we're doing things after that for our own initiative. But what are you doing? His response to that was, I'm going to work harder. Now imagine if I said that. You've called me out, Premier League footballers need to do this. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to give any money, I'm just going to work harder. What, what's your response to that? Troy, that's, that's a matter. That's a ma- Troy, this is what I find interesting because in order for you to get the education and the confidence you have, you have to go past certain consequences in life to make you realise that's not really that bad. Mm-hmm. Like when I had my girlfriend, the first one I broke up with, mate, I think I, didn't, I, think I cried for two weeks. Mm-hmm. I might have listened to, yeah, hey, the lonely girl. <laughs> and then I was like the lonely girl, but I was a guy. <laughs> but for you to have the level of confidence, for you to go, nah, like until you put certain things in place, I'm not going back to work. I think that is a man. Mm-hmm. When's the first time you had to do that in football? When's the first time you had to let people know, wait, one second, I understand everyone's going left, but Troy Deeney lives by these principles. I'm staying right here. I've always done it. I'm just trying to think. When's so one I, of came, the, I came into football late, remember, just yeah. before I was 19. So I had already had, as we spoke about before, like real life things happen mm-hmm. and molded and shaped me as a person and, and, and like even now i'm doing psychology to to break down some of them things because not all of it's good any do you get what I I'm hear saying? You, like, I there's hear a you. lot of things that i do that uh, i can't even explain to it so for example people think i'm a good talker but in, in a relationship i don't speak so my missus might go how are you feeling and i'm like mm, cool and that's it so, but oh what, what are we doing this week oh whatever whatever you want to do i can't have a conversation about like planning and figuring things out because as a kid that never happens so change you know like day to day you live day to day live week to week so i didn't 
understand and I still don't understand that now. I have five year goals that I want to do, but I can't tell you what me and my family are doing this week. Do you know what that kind of sounds like to me? When my, when me and my dad were speaking about this. I spoke to Lippy about it before. And my dad always said to me, the concept of living and surviving is so dangerous because mm-hmm. sometimes when you're living, you actually are not, you're surviving because yeah. all of the principles you've brought to live are basically like fundamental principles in surviving. Yeah. Once you're living, you actually have to kind of forget everything you know and start living. Of course. And the thing for me as well, I was having this conversation with one of my, my older boys earlier. I won't name him, but he knows who he is. Um, <laughs> We was, we was talking and it's, it's, it's a miseducation. And I think everything that you've seen now in regards to, you know, how uh, black people are marching for Black Lives Matter and all of these different um, educational things that I think people are seeing now with social media. There's, there's more, I think there's more educational videos, you know, with like a Carla and people like that actually yeah, educating people and Swiss, like educating people. No one taught me or told me, you know, when you reach a certain level of money, income, stature this is what you then have to do so all of my mistakes i've learned myself okay do you get what i'm saying so 100%. even if it was if i was earning a grand a week well i could run that that's dope what do you mean what you do you mean a grand a week to play football oh cool 500 pounds a, p- a week to play football is a um, t for my lion <laughs> but do you know what i'm saying but like then, so you go grand let's say let's make some hypothetical numbers a grand five ten twenty twenty five mm-hmm if you've ticked all them boxes off, but lived how I used to live, and people here say that, I, I, I was reckless. Bro, like, I go out 10, 15, man strong, get drunk, fight, go home, go to training the next day, like nothing happened, do it all again. Like, That's a mad thing. But I was successful on the pitch. Mm. So off the pitch, everything was mad and hectic and running around like a lunatic. On the pitch, everything's winning. So, in one aspect, you're living life wrong, but in the aspect that pays you well, you're doing everything right, because I'm scoring goals, we're in the champ, and we're, you know, I'm scoring 20 odd goals a season. It's kind of funny that you say that, because it's like, when you play football, remember when we used to coach when I was younger, the one principle that we always got told is, you're not fighting for football to sit on the bench, you're fighting mm-hmm. to take someone's jersey. Mm-hmm. So if I take a look at the principles of you in an environment where you've learned to survive, when it comes to you taking to someone's jersey, the reasons why I always growing up saw individuals from a background similar to us mm. being the individuals that had the jersey is because they didn't come from a background where they had much. Mm-hmm. So you see that jersey that you're wearing, it's mine. mine. Yeah. But my friends, yeah, some of them are from nice homes mm. and they would give me that jersey without giving me that jersey. Like mm-hmm. some boys were much better than me at football, but I am not gonna stop talking. I'm not gonna stop mm-hmm. using the attributes I have in order for me to be an influence. Of course. You haven't stopped using the attributes you have to stop being an influence mm-hmm. to the point where in which me and Tia are watching a video just before this and it was refreshing my memory that the attributes and skills you have are so integral, bro. I begin to wonder how important is that to a football club? Not on the field, forget the fact yeah, that yeah. you score goals, forget all of that. But the fact that Kante is standing with uh, and not can't say Marnie's standing with um, Ishmael Saar. So yeah. a player I saw in France, I remember playing against yeah. Arsenal. I really, really liked him. Saw lots of ability about him. When he first comes to England, I don't see the same thing replicated. But then I see conversations between you and Marnie, and it's almost like Marnie has looked at you as the person to say, look, look help my boy get back to the ability he has showed in France. Mm-hmm. What's that like? What's it like having that responsibility in a team? And how important is that for a football club? I don't think it's a responsibility. I think that's a, it's a respect. So me and Mane don't know each other from anywhere. I I've never know. really had conversations other than for that game, for example, um, my son wanted the shirt. Okay. So I asked him before, like, sorry, like, get this from my son, he's, he's on my case, isn't it? And he was like, Troy, no problem. For you, no problem. Who said that? Mane. So I'm like, Ooh, oh, amazing. No. Afterwards, that's why I come in. So I'm going to get on the bus, isn't it? Thank you very much. Again, I'm just, I'm humble in that, innit? Because you could easily turn around and go, nah, nah, like, I'm giving it to somebody else, or just said no. But I was like, thank you. Met, you know, met my son's day, appreciate it. And then he's gone and say, I didn't know people were filming at that point. You know, look after my boy. But he didn't have to say that to, you could say that to anyone. I don't think he could have. I don't think there's coincidence in his life. I just genuinely no, yeah, think but I'm saying there's like, a reason he, he's, he's said looking, it to you. He's looking at me going, like, again, I'm not technically as good as him or as fast as him, but. Now, if you can have them core principles as you're talking about, this guy can go to the top. And I believe he can. I think, he, I think Isma is a rare talent. He's like, 
athletically he's a he's a freak you can't i can't explain it bro like so fast so agile so humble and he's 21 22 like people like that when they're 25 26 it, it's scary so when you arrive at training mm-hmm. talk to me what's a day in the life troy dini you woke up in the morning it's time to go to work what's the first thing you're doing when you wake up me i'm drinking champagne on my birthday it's mad lit what does troy dini do i woke up boom what I I, do today? before i get to training i got up at 6 30 today we're in a bit later today i got up at 6 30 i walk the dogs cleaned up some dog mess <laughs> Uh, hey, someone shit on my wall the other day. That's another story. Someone? Well, I, this is, no, they've got the dog. Oh, I thought you meant a human shit. They put their dog on. That. Mate, imagine <laughs> the dog's done a shit on the floor. They've picked up the dog, put it on my wall, cleaned up that. The dog's done another shit. They just picked up the dog and carried on walking. I said, no. big man. No, 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 no. But anyway, back to you. That really hurt my heart. No, I can. Yeah, that's a myth. Myth? A myth. And then yeah. I had to clean it. How, a, that's only had to be one of them little yappy dogs, isn't yes. it? Okay, and I you can't really go mad because it's the same size as my trainer. No, nah, I do. I, I don't do little dogs. I got I got two two dogs now. I got one for my birthday, so I'm happy. Serious? Yeah. What dog did you get? Uh, an Italian Mastiff. Is a you know Game of Thrones? No, nah, I didn't watch that stuff. But I don't want to watch Game of you know Game of Thrones. You know um, the ones that he sends to eat the people. Right. That's the one, yeah. So you've got dogs that you send to eat people and you're walking them before you go football. Carry on, this is good for me. <laughs> now I've got a Rottweiler, the other one. He's Jesus Christ! Cool. <laughs> but now they're cool, man. They're just, mm. I live out in the stick, so we just go yeah. and walk on the fields and that. And then did a little bit of gym this morning, packed up some stuff that I need for this week. Um, drove to training, made some calls, because obviously doing a lot of stuff now with uh, Stephen Lawrence. Foundation. Amazing. What yeah. could you talk a little bit more about that when you Yeah, see so the Black Lives Matter, you know, with the we've, we've auctioned raffled all them shirts, so all the money raised for that will go to What shirts are these? The ones all the ones that all the lads played with with the Black Lives Matter. So it was like a five pound entry and you could have won a Bamiang's one or whoever's. Was there a like a, a am I right in saying correct me if I'm wrong, there was some type of logo or something on there that was designed by yourself? By my um, missus, yes. Yeah. that's the one that's on there now. The so one, your the missus Premier designed that? Yeah, yeah. And actually, though, it's a good platform. I'm, I don't need to talk about this, but you're going to get me going. So we trademarked it, innit? You know, like as anyone here would understand. That when you when you create something, you trademark it for clothing, socials, all these different things. You know the amount of... I'm choosing my words right here. Fuck it. You know the amount of dickheads that have messaged me or my missus going, are you trying to profit from Black Lives Matter? And it's like... Fuck off, mate. More importantly, I don't need money. Um, as we spoke about, not going 100%, back to work. Yeah, but in a time where we talk about black people need to own things, you own a own a small logo that my missus designed, like twenty of them. But the one we finally got to, we we, we trademarked. It's now going. Well, he's making money off it. And why does he? It's like I'm not the person you want to fight. You know, like your anger of, of racial injustice and social injustice isn't me. I'm not making any money off this and I'll give you exclusive so West Indies cricket team are using it no they're, way bro they're giving charitable donations to black um, charities that we choose so anyone that uses it so the Premier League used it that money goes to Stephen Lawrence West Indies are using it the England cricket team are going to be using it they're all giving money that I'm going to send to that charity send to that charity and I've got people coming on there going, why are you trademarking it? Do you know so what's I can own it to make sure the money goes to the, to the right, right places. places. But your whole thing is, ah, oh. like you have people that it messaging you like, Troy's trademarking it. For what? what? To make a hoodie? And what, sell it for five pound at the back of my car? Am I a doubt boy? Am I an idiot? And I don't normally talk about these things because you know how it gets on Instagram, people click it for 10 seconds and go, Troy Deeney said this, and it doesn't give you the whole conversation, but no, it's rude, man. Rude. People have pissed me off and I have to hold my tongue. Well, this is what I will say to you, my brother. Growing up, one thing that I've always heard a complaint about is the fact that we don't own anything. I hear Mm -hmm. people say we don't own our grime scene, we don't own Mm -hmm. our hip hop scene, we don't own all of these things. And then an individual who clearly is a man has the principles that I would love to adopt as well has gone forward and then said you know what I want to make a difference but I want to make sure I make a difference so I have to be in charge of this situation Mm -hmm. Troy I think anyone that doesn't understand that has never understood responsibility and they can say to him but I've got kids 
what are your kids doing now? You're probably not even raising your children. And I could mm-hmm. be really harsh in saying these things, but I don't think I am. What you're doing is incredible, brother. Absolutely. Wait, wait, me incredible. and the missus, I want to give you, you uh, and your just, missus just as much, 100%. if not more credit than anything. Because I didn't, the thing is, I didn't even know about that. So you have to buy the fun. You have to buy the, like, yeah. there's like four different things we own to own the image. Of which the image is that big. Do you know what I mean? So I would never have done it because, again, from our background, you're not, you're not taught about trademarking and owning and ownership. The only thing I know we can own is trainers and a house. Maybe a car if you're lucky. Not a house for me. Trainers though. I've got some dope ones in my house. But yeah. Yeah, I saw some of yours. They're a bit suspect. But all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I hear you. I just think nah, what you're doing yeah. is... What, and what, what you know anyway. I'm sure you know this already. Because I just think when you're the sacrifice and you're doing things for the first mm. time, there's always going to be a group of people that don't understand. But then you give it 10 years, that oh, is the, yeah. that's the done thing that everyone does. It could be something as simple as trademarking. It could be something as simple as a particular type of celebration. I remember mm-hmm. when people used to say... They get angry with uh, celebrating in football and like, oh my God, I remember Chelsea in 96, 97 used to do very flamboyant celebrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone used to complain. And now you've got people doing celebrations on computer games. Mm-hmm. So I, for me personally, I think what you're doing, everyone will understand in 10 years. And I think it's beautiful that you started No, no. It. It, it, and that's the thing. That's the bigger picture that we, we sit and have conversations at the dinner table. Like, um, help me out here, but I swear in, in the Muslim community, it's called Deans, no? Yeah, so it's giving you Dean, so you, it's how you have things that are, are there when you're gone. Mm-hmm, exactly, so exactly. I've got, obviously, I did some stuff before um, with, with, my, with my charity that was giving to kids with autism, so we, we made a football pitch that they could learn on. Oh, obviously, wow. anyone with kids with autism and learn difficulties, they fall over a lot, so we put it as Astro, and spe- I think that was about 45,000, I think we raised for that 50,000. But that, that don't need to be changed for 15 years. That, that's incredible and I can say to you when I've done youth work my brother will know mm. um, I've done youth work for nine years in the first year we tried to change the pitch mm-hmm. when I left we were still trying to change the pitch no, no. so, that's so it's like it's, that's how unless somebody comes are. in and goes that's what we're doing and that, that's what I did and, and the school's amazing and kids anyone that's got kids with like learning difficulties or any kind of behavioural problems it's mad hard work. So that relief for not only the teachers, but for the parents to know they're going to a safe environment, obviously, is, is, is sick. But that's what we talk about now at home. As I say, we, what happens if, if I got licked down today? Yeah, kids are good. My, like, you know what I mean? Like, financially, people are good, but what, what are people remembering when you're not here? Legacy, village mentality. It's mm, more, it's, so much more important. Mm. But I want you to understand... You've done all of this before you've even started training. You haven't even spoken to everyone yet. You haven't mm. said hello. This is your journey in the morning yeah, before this, you yeah. start. So and I just don't think this is everyone's journey. So please carry yeah. on now. Sorry, yeah, I forgot I no, what you're talking cool, about. Sorry, apologies. So yeah, so then we get into work. Yeah. We obviously have to get scanned now to make sure you ain't got a temperature and stuff. <laughs> I've got that for the apple store the other day. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you go. Do you want a laptop? Oh, <coughs> yep, you're the right temperature to buy a laptop. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> so we yeah we go in. Um, then we have like 45 minutes, hour before. So do a bit of my knee, like add a knee up. So I have to take care of my knee and take care of my ankles. Train, finished. Trained a bit later today, so I finished at half two. And it was like ah, straight in, no food, and then people are ordering Nando selfishly in the <laughs> Uh, it's an in-house joke um, <laughs> yeah get and come straight here yeah but then I, even when I'm here I'm on the phone talking to like so I spoke to Wes Morgan today about some things that we're trying to achieve and hopefully have in place moving forward for you know black youth and educational purposes you know moving forward so who was the Troy Deeney in Troy Deeney's career growing up for Troy Deeney to operate like this or is this literally something you've kind of s- not self-taught, but you've allowed life to teach you rather than something in football. Nah, it's difficult. You see, if I believe in something or I'm passionate about something, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it anyway. Like, no one can stop me. But what's happened in the, probably the last two years, yeah, about the last two years, is certain things have just like, I don't know, say I did an interview with you, for example, when we did it at Yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's refurbished, by the way. You should come around soon. Uh, it's not about... I get your birthday, you're studying, you got champagne, 
<laughs> Refurbished house. <laughs> so we got that new money. It's cool. I like to see it. But borrowed. But for me though, like it goes before that. So whenever we've met, I've I've always been polite to people and it, it's come back tenfold. Yeah. And now I'm realizing that as I say like a couple of years on. So we did an interview, that gets that's gets picked up. More people go, right, I didn't know that about Troy. Yeah. And then I did an interview the other day with Lou Ferru and he's saying he watched four interviews and yours was one of them. Oh, wow. You know, in his like, in oh, his wow. research. Lou Ferru's watched my thing. That's what, my what, brother, come on fam, come here. I think it's more because Troy was on it, but cool, whatever. <laughs> 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 no, but no, do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And it's all impacted. Yeah. But none of that would have happened if when me and you first met, we weren't cool. I totally agree. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, totally if I agree. if I come to you like I'm a footballer and I'm sick and I'm, you'd have been like, who's this dickhead? Mm. And vice versa. So, I just realised that everything I'm doing now, you know, pulling out there, being being supportive, and a lot of things I've done in the background that I don't talk about is, is now coming to fruition. Coming to fruition. Yeah. Do you know what I find interesting? If for you to have so many strong principles and so many character traits that I think can be very, 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 very beneficial for so much groups of people. Naturally, mm. and not even like on purpose, I think you identify it in other people. So yeah. within your changing room or in, in, in the Premier League, what other footballers do you see with similar traits to you who are a little bit younger, say under 25, where you go, wow, I see the potential in what you can do outside of football? You know, there's a, there's a lot. And I think, and I think Raheem is basically become the so Sam, the, the black poster child, you know what I mean? Like we all, no, we're all from. going like, if he speaks, we're doing what he does. No matter what, we kind of go. I love him for that. Yeah, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it is, it is, it is cool. But I think what I am. Who's one that people wouldn't really necessarily hear about as such? Because I love the commercialized versions of everything that's happening. Yeah, it's great. But you know but the thing is, I don't think, and this is, I was having this conversation literally just before I walked in. Yeah. You you won't know that person because it's not cool to talk about that black kid. Aye, aye, aye. It's not cool to talk about that Asian kid, but if there's a if there's a white kid that's doing really well, we'll he's in the papers and push it and push it and push it. That's why you won't hear about it. For example, um, do I talk? I won't use names because I haven't spoken to him. And I don't know if he wants his name. Is but fair enough. In certain instances within this Black Lives Matter, getting it on the shirts and stuff, there were there were white people that were very white players that were very vocal to help oh wow could you say potentially one of the names ask him in confidence whether he wants it if he doesn't want it we'll cut it out of the interview just say if he does want it it'd be nice to because I the thing is as much as I understand where you're coming from and it's like I don't want to reveal names yeah. the audience that we're giving it to in mm. order for them to understand and in order for them to be like this is the right thing to do you give them a name of someone and it sparks something in them say for example Ben Me. that completely yeah. surprised me when I see Ben Me saying that after the Man City game mm. I First of all, his name's me, so it's all about him. So for him <laughs> to think about anybody else at that, that moment in time, I'm like... No, I was, I was the same. Hey, I thought hey, I, I rated him so highly. Ben me, that was ridiculous, bro. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have to... Nope. He didn't have to speak about um, the plane or, take, you know, like, take a stance for it. And that's what I think is so different now in regards to... Mo people say movements, but I don't really like calling movements. I think yeah. just where the world's at right now, I think it's so different because you are getting white black asian yeah everyone just going this ain't right you know this ain't right bro and everyone's gonna go in now i'm if that's if that's about equality i'm behind it mm -hmm. and i and i and i'm already watching and i'm gonna person that observes everything and you can see that they're already trying to get black lives matter so tarnished now yep. that people are like ah don't really want to be associated with it don't get me wrong, the political angle in, in America, for example, mm -hmm. is something I wouldn't get involved in. Nope. Because politics is politics, is what we were taught as a kid. Like, they all, <laughs> they all chat shit and they all lie. And they claim they're for the people, but they're for themselves. So it's all a lot of bollocks. But in regards to what everyone's doing now, protesting and understanding police brutality, do you think that just happens in America? It happens everywhere. But in only in certain communities. Bro, been fucked up by police yeah. my boys have been fucked up by police yeah. do you think we ah now we're marching for it no we've been screaming it yo got fucked up you know my dad no, god uh, god bless the dead but been having it my granddad's 
on calls you say for you we've been talking about this for so long but now we've obviously what i think has really triggered people is with george floyd it's eight minutes 42 seconds i believe of raw you're no. seeing it uncut it's not a um shop cctv it's filmed off the iphone which is basically it's camera quality now and you're seeing it and you see a man die but when you when you then go this isn't the first incident there is all of these names and i was going to wear my i got a jacket made that my missus made for my birthday i was going to wear it today but it's too controversial for that but it's got everyone's name on it that's rude boy it sparks a conversation that's un- uncomfortable for people but this if is I, the thing i'll, I'll stop sorry, you there because i see where you're coming from but this is why i think we get along mm-hmm. i can honestly say can i change this top is that okay yeah there's no rules so yeah so I'm just checking so or Troy's gonna you might just take it off yeah, take when go, you're go, go, comfortable go. I can and say no I'm not moving team before anyone says anything <clears throat> what is it let me see come on we're just trying to go Los Angeles and get a tan <laughs> well, nice sir. thank you so this go. is what I find interesting Troy you have go. a group of individuals who are speaking the truth and you have a commercial market mm-hmm. when anything gets commercialised it's the same procedure yep so I remember watching Wayne Rooney at 15 years old in an under-18 game at Tottenham Hotspur. It was Tottenham versus Everton, and Wayne Rooney scored a free kick from 35 yards. Mm-hmm. So this is pretty much before the social media Forever, era, yeah. but I'd done youth work, so we took a group of young people, and it was the whole gas that Tottenham Hotspur said, that you can be a young footballer, which yeah. was obviously a lie. And we went there, and we saw Wayne Rooney score at 15 years old. Mm-hmm. So we, as a group of individuals in our estate, literally were telling everyone about Wayne Rooney. Mm-hmm. He's the best thing in the world. Through finding out this information, we found something where Wayne Rooney was trying to chip the goalkeeper, Neville Southall, when he was a youngster at the Merseyside derby. Mm-hmm. So we're just invested in this Wayne Rooney. Year. By the time he scores past David Seaman, the whole world's speaking about him. Mm-hmm. Now, the reasons why we were like, oh, that's lit, is because in our minds, he was always great. Yep. You lot have just noticed now. Mm-hmm. But then let's take a look at the, what the commercial world does to something they consider great. You only have about four or five years in the commercial world before mm-hmm. they go, fuck, we've got this next person that yeah, we need yeah. to bring through. It happens in football, it happens in music, it happens everywhere in life. And why can't it happen with Black Lives Matter? If we've all been screaming Black Lives Matter way before it's been commercialised, it's mm-hmm. been commercialised for a reason. One, it's popular, public demand. You have to give what the public wants. So now mm-hmm. this is what the public want. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to see it in FIFA. I don't want to see everyone's black. I've just bought a Kone. I want to see a Kone on the back of the top at Newcastle United playing right wing, not Black Lives Matter. That doesn't make me feel like, oh, Black Lives Matter because it's on a mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. I don't feel Black Lives Matter because a man's taking a really cool black and white photo at a march. I don't, I don't think Black Lives Matter because of that as well. Mm-hmm. I don't even think Black Lives Matter because happened because I can see a big banner say, I, no, that's not why Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter because when I go back to my estate, I see underprivileged individuals in a situation they shouldn't be in because of their social class or their colour. That's why black lives matter. Now Mm -hmm. my thing is this, if it means that's the reason you march, then you go and march. Mm -hmm. If it's the reason you take the picture, you go and take the picture. But what I think we all have to accept, when it's given to a commercial market, Mm -hmm. someone's going to put black lives matter in EA Sports and convince us that now we are solving the problem. But I'm going to go back to my estate and see all the problems that already exist. So I think because of that, my brother, I think it's very important for us to do these conversations and do these things because whilst it is commercial, somebody has to send the right message because if you don't, you just be like a Visu jeans. I wanted them so badly until Mm -hmm. I saw them in Wembley Market going for real cheap Mm -hmm. and I realised no one was wearing them anymore, but I still bought them. Of course. No, they're not popular no more. Mm -hmm. I don't want Black Lives Matter to be like a Visu jeans. and And that's the big reason... For example, uh, me and Wes pushed it so hard in, in the meeting, me and mm-hmm. Wes Morgan, um, because you have Kick It Out campaign, you have Show Racism the Red Card, you have all of these so-called racism groups that are here to help people. Tell me a time you've ever saw a Kick It Out campaign in, in your area. Never. That's London, North London, right you're from? Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Birmingham, I've never seen it. There's all, a lot of money invested, a lot of, you know, box ticking, I like to call it. So we have to give better example. You're getting me started now. So you have, <laughs> you have this thing here yeah, when they say there's a diversity group. Yeah. In every big company, there's a diversity group to make sure they are ticking the boxes of how many black, Asian, women, uh, LBGTQ plus community Just people. Just like in all, youth work, yeah. All are in the same thing. 
But if we're trying to get diverse, then there shouldn't be a diverse committee making sure that it's right. It should be the best people get the job, right? Why do you have to have a diversity group to make sure your company's diverse, but we're screaming we want equality and diversity? Surely that's redundant then. Let's just hire whoever applies for the job and make sure that we're applying the applications in the right place. But then you're dealing with a group of people that are having control and influence. Mm -hmm. Like for example, take a look at David mm -hmm. Lammy. Let's take a look at David Lammy. Control and influence is, 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 um, is what's the name though, and it? it's, it's perceptional. A hundred percent, but if you haven't got enough you know, freedom of thought within your mind yeah. to actually see what's going on, it's very easy to manipulate you and to control you. Yeah. So I can tell you, I've never even told this story on camera, but I have no problem telling it because I don't really care about the individuals involved. But I remember uh, working with Tottenham Hotspur Foundation, mm -hmm. and I remember them telling me that David Lammy, the PM, uh, Sky News, Sky Sports News, all of these people are coming down to Ferry Lane Estate, and they knew that I had enough influence in my estate mm -hmm. that I could pack up that pitch. No one else could. Yeah. So they said to me, Poet, these are all the wonderful things that are happening. Um, we're going to have fresh balls, fresh bibs, mm -hmm. all of these things happening. Get some young people down there. I know where this is you going. get them down there, before in half an hour, once everyone's come, Tony Blair, ooh, David Lammy, they all disappear. Okay. And David Lammy is representing Tottenham, but he disappears with all the nice new balls, all the nice new cons, mm -hmm. What I always say to people is the commercialization of something, for me personally, if it's, live, if, live, like if it's given to them, it will kill whatever you're trying to build because they don't care about the long journey. They mm -hmm. care about the time that they noticed it. So yeah. if the journey's been seven years and you notice it after the seventh year, you just care about the year that you noticed it and what the next three years look like. Mm -hmm. With Black Lives Matter and with all of these issues that are actually happening and manifesting, if you're not employing somebody who knows the necessary skills to look at to say, hey, Troy Dini's got the right skills to be involved in this, mm -hmm. or this player's... You shouldn't be there. You can't have such a powerful position mm -hmm. and be so ignorant to the people you're employing. Otherwise, you make a diversity committee yeah. and you ask them to do the job that you don't really care about. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Will I it change? I don't, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. You, when, when, and I think I've cut you off just as you're about to say no. the key thing that everyone says. Will it change? Probably not. But if that's the case, what the fuck are we doing it for then? All of us shut the fuck up, go to work and do as you're told. And that's the reasons why I think people like you owning something that is given to our community is the most important thing in the world because mm -hmm. now it is not a commercial situation. Mm -hmm. It's somebody from the community owning something that's going to be in every single community so therefore you know how to distribute it. Mm -hmm. If anybody has an argument or a problem with that, I just think that's their problem. Yeah, I get that. 100%. But what I'm saying is, for me, you've got to remember, so my missus is middle class. She's dope. You've met her. She's not built the same as me. Yeah. I wouldn't want her to be. No, I hear you. you. No one wants her missus to be built like that. So when someone says, Troy's this or Troy's that online, there's either two things. You get me giggle, and then I go through your Instagram and laugh at all your pictures and never say anything. <laughs> or two, Miles, you'll say something about a subject that I, I take personally and I'll see ya. That's it. I'm not, I'm not when I say I see you, I'm not gonna beat you up. I'm no. not gonna confront you when I see ya. The internet is a scary place for me. I've said this to you before. Yeah. I respect you guys that can maneuver through it so well because it's so great to me. Like genuinely everyone's life is great. Have you not noticed? Just, they're not. And that's no, what no, I'm saying, yeah. like I'll look out there going Fuck it out, I'm, I'm doing shit at life, you know, because I feel like shit today, but you guys are all... And that's why, Troy, I've actually alienated myself from commercial world. I'm mm -hmm. not interested because all you do is lie to me. I mm -hmm. go into your Instagram, every day is great, and before you know, after a year, you're broken up with your partner. So I can't <laughs> listen to something that <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know is a lie. I can only yeah. put myself in an environment that I fully understand, I do know. You, do you think that closes you, though, close minds you a little bit? Not at all, because I've live for long enough to know what I want, Yeah. know enough people, traveled enough to know what I think is a healthy way to live life okay. and a healthy way to navigate through it. So you've got life experiences before us. So because of yeah. all of that, I now have to create a path which is unique to me and say, this is where I'm going. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if everyone thinks it's crazy. You haven't lived my life. You don't mm -hmm. know what the hell I'm doing. I just about know. So I need people in and around me that are skilled at what they do. Mm -hmm. And then we all work together. And I think that's a village mentality so, that makes sense to that's me. That's business. 
Business, village. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I just call it village because when I say it business... Yeah, people, people put, yeah. monetize it and put I've it that I've spoken to yeah. Wiley and, it's like if I, and he's right. If I say it business to somebody, they translate it so differently. So after six months, they yeah. want to know where all their money is. Yeah, if I course. say village, you understand yeah. that we're all in the same position. Mm. You understand that when I see money, you're going to see money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you think I'm seeing money earlier, it's because it's business to you. So the translation mm. is very important as yeah, well. Yeah, wording is, is a big thing. I Word. understand that. And the power of wording is how you say things. When did you learn that? About three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? No, no, the missus has always been saying it mm. because similar to him, I don't say nothing mm. or I go off. So, do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I, mean yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, speak yeah. Yeah. or you piss me off and I'm, you're getting it all and it's effing this, that and the other. I hear you. So, I'm trying to bring myself to the to this end of the spectrum where I have a little conversation. Like I could speak about subjects all day, but for example, I was in a, in, a, in, a, in a business meeting and what I'd said, and I've been in business with this person for five, six years, but when I first met this person, yeah. he said to me, you know, you invest X amount, he will give you X amount back in this much time, blah, 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 blah. My hand on heart conversation was cool if I give you this much money just need you to be prepared that I'm not giving you my money I'm giving you my kids money so if you fuck it up I won't sue you I'll come and take it from you that was in a business but this guy's in a suit and everything and I'm in a hoodie and he must have looked at me and gone who's this Udlam I've had the same conversation with him on a previous on a, on a, on a, on a last project and I was just like look just because of the current situation, this, this, and this. Spoke to properly, he's like, Troy, give you a guarantee. This, this, and this. But just because I spoke nicely to him, he's now going, I can guarantee that money. We've got the relationship. Whereas I before, before I'm going, if you don't do it, I'm turning up at your house and I'll take cars and everything, but I'll, get, I'll get my money back. Jada Kiss style. I'm respecting but it. He yeah. told Diddy the same thing. But in hindsight, All that's blo- it's blocked me because he's had so many other projects that could have made me so much more money but he's like I don't want to give him that risky one because he doesn't understand the translation and that's all it is yeah I fully understand it and that's what's so beautiful about living in England I think as well like sometimes people think that just because you understand what I'm saying word for word Mm. you understand what I'm saying word for word you don't it's the equivalent sometimes of learning a whole new language the way that of people are body language everything is tone, a big thing yeah all of these things make it so different mm-hmm. you no know, we've spoken a lot about the past from from troy we've spoken a lot about the present i've learned a lot mm. what does the future look like for troy dini after football because so you have such a presence as an individual i'm very interested to know is there any plans that you have in place that you're willing to tell us that you're going to do after I'm football i'm always willing to talk yeah honestly the biggest thing i don't know that's the honest answer oh, i don't know keeping it true what i am um, what i I'm doing at this moment in time is making sure I've got so many doors to walk through. Yes. That if it comes to and I open this door, let's say it's coaching and it's not for me, whatever way like I've had enough of football, don't like, I can't speak to the people, they're not doing what I want. Mm-hmm. All right, cool, shut that door. I add all the things there, it's done, and I've got these other doors to. 100%. I think I see, because well, a lot of my friends are older, people pigeonhole themselves. So they're like, Ex-footballers, for example, will go, I want to go to media. What do you want to do? I want to work for Sky. But why? Why Sky? There's all these... No, no, because Sky's the one that people see me on Super Sunday and you're successful. Like, you know, like, that's the image of it. Whereas you could actually do Premier League productions that goes, I think, 157 countries. The target audience is much bigger, but no one in the UK knows that even works. Or you can do what I say. I I hear you. Or you can do what I always think. Do Do you? Yeah, yeah, you can do your own. Don't pay rent in someone else's house when you can create your own dynasty. I don't know how long Sky Sports has been around, but at the moment, when they started, it probably was one man and a couple of people around you. Mm -hmm. So then don't go and create someone else's dream and make it bigger. But that's your dream, though. Same time as what you're saying, it's the same thing. No, I hear you, but... Some people don't want that. Some people like the structure of, let me go to work, Mm -hmm. because I know if I go from my house to that studio and mm. I work from 12 till 6 I get X amount of money and I get home and that's it that's a, just, there's no stress I won't go into it in too much detail here I genuinely believe this Troy the moment you recognise because this is what I had to recognise and it hurt me I was born I knew nothing cool 
My mum was, she pretty much was more invested in herself. My dad was on road. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that I paid a lot of attention to and concentration to was television mm -hmm. and then on road. And all my friends were the same. Mm -hmm. So that whole time when I was learning stuff and building principles and so on and so forth, the principles I built for my family was of fear and everything else I knew was from television and bloody road. Mm -hmm. So that means after 15 to 20 years of living, you have to ask yourself, what the what hell do you even know? Mm -hmm. So when people say to me, that's not my dream, I'm like, are you sure? Because I genuinely feel if you saying that my dream is to get a house, a car and a job, you've watched My Wife and Kids, mm -hmm. you might have watched it. You've watched so much content where that looks like the easy way mm -hmm. to live life. That's the reasons why you think it's yeah. the life to live. But if you grew up in a house, and you only consumed information that was about business and how mm -hmm. you can be your own person, what then you said. would be that. So therefore, even, productive I just think to myself, exactly. So if you're a product of your environment, that means your thoughts are not your own. So mm -hmm. you should go and live life, see everything life has to offer, mm -hmm. and then ask yourself, what, what do I want to do? But there's also a bigger thing that with that is- That's uh, what I genuinely- No, I, 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 I completely agree with you. There's a bigger thing on that though, go where on. we, we, say if you're, Say if you're a man that's 30 to 35. Yeah. Some people in this room might be that. I don't know anyone's Listen, age. Listen, it's my birthday today. Let's keep it cool. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like 30 to 35. Yeah. If you're not publicly perceived to be on your own two feet, have a house, have a car, have all, all these external pressures, then everyone's going, oh, you don't know what you're doing. But think about it now. Other than footballers and people that are doing other things elsewhere, whether it be boxers, uh, musicians, people on road. The twenties are your learning. You meant I to totally go on holiday. Agree. You meant to fuck up. You meant to piss yourself because you've drunk too much. Whatever it is you've got to do, <laughs> you meant to learn all these mistakes to then go thirties, forties, fifties, sixties. But from our neighbourhood, you're not expected to live up to forty and fifty. Wow. So you condense it. So now okay. everyone's going. You've got to have the yard by twenty. You gotta be driving by 18, you wow. gotta have a nice car by yeah. 20, you gotta be the house by 25, Jesus. 30, you gotta have kids, 35, you, you finished. That's what I'm saying about what people see. Jesus Christ, that's even, that's scarier. Because think about it now, how many successful 50 year old black men do you know? Jay Z, but apart from that, yeah, I don't know anyone. Because we, we don't see it. This is mental, bruv. But you go, if you go to your community and go, that, 35 to 40 year old that's still shot in the same as he was when he was 20 there's loads of them that is m do you get what I'm saying it's 100% still, so when you talk about like media and stuff it's about it's still about your environments and what you see I had the same arguments with the person on the other side mm. where I tell him like it's designed for us to lose that doesn't mean we don't play the game because we're designed to lose still play the game cool yeah. but I'm going I'm to keep digging out roads I'm, you know what Troy's going to run right and see how far I can take it but along the way you might pick up two three four little gems and go alright let me pull that mm -hmm. and I'm going to go left mm -hmm. and see what I can do with that Troy's way isn't right your way isn't right but it's right for me I respect that do you get what I'm saying Fully. but like to my kids now I'm saying educate yourself yes educate like I'm reading three books a month four books a month at this moment in time I didn't do that at school. I didn't finish school. But I'm smashing it out because I'm going, I don't, I don't know that. What's that book that I watched the Charlemagne interview? What's that book he mentioned? All right, mm. let me write that down. Watch the Kevin Hart, what's that? But who? I don't know who that is. Give me all this information because if, if it works for you, doesn't mean I have to make myself a billionaire. I might make myself three million, four yeah. million. And in my world, that's, that's massive. You in most worlds, that's massive. But what, but what I'm saying to you is that we do this again. I know we're trying to end it because you want to watch that other team play. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but what I'm saying is you, you, we stereotype it. So I say this to my boy, you want a scratch card today, yeah? Let's say 100 grand. Yeah. You, yo, if you're speaking to someone that's on your, that you perceive is on your level or in the same environment as you, yo, 100 bags, you know, massive. You know what I can do with that? You say that to me now, you go, I know it's not on your level, but to me, this is... Yeah, right there, I right It's all relative, because do I not have bills? Do I not have kids to feed? But you We're know what? We're all doing the same thing, it's just on a different scale. But Troy, so, there's only one thing that exists, though. Life. No oh, matter what interpretation we have of life, there is only life. No, so if yeah. another life exists, in my mind, that means I can accomplish it. 
If I my ancestry well, remember is, what we got to remember who you're talking to. No, but we, me and you were talking because we've lived and educated. How many kids in just off your estate that you spoke to alone haven't been on holiday? Hundred percent. So they don't to... know outside of that role. Hundred percent. So what you have to do is when they talk or when they hear Troy, they might not never know me or respect me at all, but they're gonna listen and go. Now nah, he's talking sense there. Hundred. And that's all I ever want someone to go. Now nah, he's talking sense because you have to be able to go. All right, how do you transition? And this is what we're never taught at school. Everything's about transitioning. Yeah. So you transition from a boy to a, a teenager, teenager to early man, man to an adult. But no one transitions you to financial freedom. Yes. No true. one transitions you to what happens if life throws a curveball at you? You're going to quit. You transition because things happen. I could drive home today and have a flat tire. I weren't anticipating having to pay for that tyre to be fixed or the man to come out and do it. Have you got the four hundred pound put aside to get that done? Maybe not. But if you watch YouTube or Instagram, sorry, everyone's got grants put away, ain't they? Because that's all these kids are seeing now. This is what I'm going to say because I'm going to end it here. Troy, you can never say you're not a good talker. I think <laughs> a good talker is defined by the truth. If mm. you tell the truth, how can you be bad? Well, everything you said today will still be relevant in 10 years. Mm. So as much as you think you're not a good talker, if what you're saying has elements of truth in it consistently and we can use this for the rest of our lives, then that's better than watching any educated person that knows every single word in the dictionary say anything because they can just manipulate me to chat shit. Mm-hmm. So try I think, I think I people need to, you, final thing, yeah. anyone that's doing your Instagram and that, make sure you follow your Akalas, your Swisses, your, make sure you see the videos and don't just watch the... 30 seconds sit and read and listen because and again I will end it on this because I told you you started me off so when I was <laughs> my son's about to go to secondary school yeah and I said to him how many like how many black history months or how many black uh, scientists or any anything black did you learn at school he goes to private school none dad oh, okay Know about Chinese New Year though, right? Yeah. yeah. Know about what happened in Egypt with the pyramids and that, right? Yeah. So why did you not know anything about black people? Because you're half black. So why don't... You know what I mean? I hear you, brother. I you. Are you not questioning that, son? Oh, I don't really think about it. And it made me then think, right, do I force that on him? Or do I make him see no colour, which people are trying to do as this thing, which I think is a lot of nonsense because... Ultimately, that's like me looking at you and going, I just see you as, I, I just see you straight through you. Because if I look at your man, Nate, he's white, you're brown. Like, we have to, you have to look and see colour. So this whole I don't see colour is, is bullshit. It's we may as well just wear grey, grey outfits and we're all in grey. You can't you have that, saying? you can't have that perception because the majority of the world doesn't see it like that. Exactly. So if you see it like that, you're by yourself so, and you have to navigate through this world. So, so. one thing I'm, I'm working on now, and I'm hopeful that I can get to have a conversation with Akala and people like that is how do we make an educational program now Amazing. that we go to the schools and say go to government to go to schools that has to be part of the curriculum I think to me that is incredible because after saying? you're gone that is still happening that's, that's, that's that the biggest that's the, you asked me earlier on it and I wasn't really going to put the pressure on myself but I thought fuck it why not um, that's, that's the one I think because we again we highlight it black history month so you're telling me in 30 days you can talk about a whole life form of black people 30 days you can do that if i said to you now you've got a white history month you could do that in one in 30 days we do it in 11 months so it's pretty good do you get what i'm saying though yeah. that so that's where i'm going all right we do black history month and we talk about the, the and even in that we talk about the the child friendly ones i don't hear people talk about malcolm x because he was he promoted fear to to others we will defend ourselves by any means necessary now when you hear that you talk about wording any means necessary oh what what could what can these people do but you know what's so sad about malcolm we can go on forever about Mm -hmm. this because i think black history is yesterday Mm-hmm. so I think your black history I think Kano's black history mm-hmm. I think Getz is black history I think yeah. Wiley's got black history and I think the moment you realise and you categorise all of these important integral black figures throughout you remember time that, together Malcolm X died 60 odd years ago come on my brother <laughs> my nan is 75 
Same thing with my you dad. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, come on, they were my, alive when that was happening. My so, dad turned seventy, bro. Mm-hmm. He was alive when all of this stuff was going on. Mm-hmm. So I'll I can go on forever. <laughs> one thing I will say to you is one thing I've always been stuck on is I don't take any of this stuff with black people. Like I don't care about people commercializing this. Mm-hmm. If you know my friendship circle, if you know everyone around me. Anybody making a mockery of black people has been a problem for me mm. since I was about 15 years old, my brother. Mm-hmm. I'm so not on it. I've of never course. been on it. So when I look like the crazy person, which I did, and mm. I know I did, even down to when I was at Copper 90, mm. I used to say to them, what are you talking about? No, 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 that's not happening. And I look like the crazy guy because where I'm from, that just doesn't happen. Of course. So you step into a working environment where they're condoning mm-hmm. certain things it's very uncomfortable and I'll come forward and be like yo no you can't do that and if you take a look at the conversation me and you have here and the conversation at my house in comparison to the copper 90 one we weren't allowed to yeah remember it's no there's no comparison do you know what I mean so and it was time slotted remember it was time slotted you're 10 minutes and then you've got someone walking you through like hi Troy's here now but it's just all nonsense but you came into my house comfortable you've come here comfortable it's the same setup but most importantly the content's better so I think again I'm finishing I'll promise I'll shut up like even for me so yeah. my best friend my, my four best friends yeah but my best best friend white married to a black woman mixed race kids we have discussions but he's giving it me from the other perspective you know how enlightening that is oh very because he's going do you know how many people because if you looked at him he looks like a football hooligan and he's laughing because he knows what about six, <laughs> six foot three white Bored, dead. I've seen him in your pictures. You know, you know I know exactly what you're talking about. Tatted up and all of that. But he's got a mixed race daughter. So he's sitting there going, and his missus is black. So do you think he's not sitting there going, hold on, I've, I feel that pain. His best, best friend's me. He must think be he's not saw all the racial nonsense I have to deal with. But then also with that, got my Moroccan brother over here. He's one of my oh best my friends. G- my third friend is Irish. Yeah. So, Irish people have been, like Irish and Italians have been getting hammered for years, years in in the in the white social classes. Do you get what I'm saying? So they they get racially abused as well. And then my other best friend is Jamaican and in a wheelchair. So that's my core group of people. That's amazing. Bro. So when we're talking and having these chats, yeah, it's just... like it's all different perspectives different perspectives that's amazing bro. and that's like, why when that you try is... and drive things home I don't like when people have conversations with the same people that's like it's like going we both believe this so let's just talk about this because all you're going to do is talk you're meant to challenge each other you're meant to have conversations that are uncomfortable that challenge that push the envelope forward if they don't push the envelope forward as I said earlier might as well call it a day and go fuck it we'll just read that book that they wrote in 1955 and say that's how it all is to be fair, that's why I don't get along with United fans. They're all <laughs> Troy, look, I'm telling Sorry, you, this is if we don't stop, thing. we're going no, to no, no, chat no, to you all day, fam. 100%. Troy, thank you so much for coming. Thank you it's for been my me. birthday. You can't share a drink. We can't even share a spud because of social I, distance. Yeah. I don't drink anymore. I'm don't you? Six months in, I ain't had a drink. Sorry to hear, man. I'll drink on your <laughs> behalf. Everyone, you have to like, you have to share, and you have to subscribe. If you don't, I'll be calling you out. God bless you all. Drink my way. If you're above the right age and stuff. Yeah, in a cup. Come on, fam. Demon. You didn't see Demon. No glasses. We drink out of mugs here, my brother. (laughs)